Uh, let's cross over to Dr. Morandi. That is an issue, isn't it, to say that historically Arzalis vote for Arzali participants, and that has been a historical uh, fact. Why didn't it happen this time? Is that not a question to be answered? Well, again, I think it's far more sophisticated than that, and I don't think that Persians vote for Persians and Azeris vote for Azeris. If that was the case, then the people of Tehran should not have voted for Mr. Musevi or people from Fars or other provinces. I think that that sort of argument is a bit, um, is a bit, I don't know, uh, cheap to me. Uh, I, I don't know if that's what Mr. Ansari said. I'm, I'm just saying, yes. uh, uh, sorry. Then I, I think that there's a, I think that's, there's, there's a problem with it. In general, uh, though, Dr. Ahmadinejad, one could say, he has lived in Azerbaijan for eight years, and he is fluent in the Azeri language. In fact, during his speeches in the Azeri cities, he would speak in Azeri, he would read poetry in Azeri, and on television in Tehran, in his programs uh, for, uh, for the Iranian people, he would uh, be speaking in Azeri so that everyone would know uh, how fluent he is. So I think that in that sense, Mr. Ahmadinejad had a strength as well, just as much as Mr. Musevi. And in addition, he traveled to the Azari provinces, like all other provinces, whereas Mr. Musevi really didn't have the time to because he had just become a candidate more recently. A couple of points that Mr. Ansari said, and I'm really disappointed that he left because I really think that an, a, an objective debate is really the best way forward. Uh, one of the problems that we have in Tehran is that people, some people got very hot-headed over the issues. The candidates, I think many of the candidates went a bit too far. And uh, after the elections, again, I think emotions ran too high. And that's one reason why we had some of the, th the troubles that we did. Two things that Mr. Ansari said that are wrong um, was that one, he said that 50 cities, where it's 50 towns. And the second, oh, he, that voted more than 100%. And it's easy for a town because people move around on the weekend and because the turnout was so high everywhere, it's e easy to understand why a small town could have more than 100% of the people who can vote there voting because people come in from other cities. He also said that the Guardian Council said that 3 million votes are missing. The Guardian Council never made such a statement. What the Guardian Council said is that all, all, if you include all these 50 towns and you all of the votes in these 50 towns together are 3 million votes. And even if we were to say all these 50 towns, the votes should be cancelled, still it would have no effect on the election. Unfortunately, the Western media misinterpreted this, whether intentionally or not, and they kept saying something quite different. And now, unfortunately, Mr. Ansari, Dr. Ansari, has said the, basically the same thing. That is not what the Guardian Council said, and that is one reason why I believe that uh, experts within Iran are more able and competent to be able to analyze election results because anthropologists and politicians here live in this country, they know the country well, they are fluent in Persian and they can understand what the Guardian Council says, what the different candidates say, and are uh, experts on statistics statistics are just as competent as anywhere else in the world. Let's too. Uh, cross over to Dr. Uh, Dr. Afri Osabi at this point. Uh, I'd like to pick, on, uh, pick up on some of the points made in this uh, report by Chatham House, uh, some of the more notable ones, and I quote here, um, in order for the official statistics to be correct, Ahmadinejad would have needed to win over all new voters, all former Rafsanjani voters, and also up to 44% of former reformist voters in some areas. So that's a, a pretty astounding uh, figure. How would you respond to that? Well, to my knowledge, this report came out before the Interior Ministry put out on its website a detailed breakdown of votes in every district. And if you go to that website and look up the, the numbers, particularly in the rural areas where uh, Dr. Ansari claims that Mr. Ahmadinejad is not popular at all, you see that you know, uh, heavy turnout for Mr. Ahmadinejad is listed. And the question that Dr. Ansari needs to answer is, is it a hoax? Was it, was it a number fixer? Mr. Musavi had more than 40,000 observers at the voting stations and as of yesterday you know the council council of guardians said that they have not received any documented complaints 
from any of Muslim Musabi's observers, and one wonders why. You know, there is the issue of voter fraud hoax. And as I said a minute ago, we cannot take questionable statistical analysis, especially when there are contradictory ones around, as a substitute for empirical investigation and hard evidence of fraud. And unfortunately, that seems to me is what Dr. Ansari is trying to convey, given the fact that his report has been elevated to the status of a final statement on this fraud issue by CNN and the world media. So, you know, you cannot have your cake and eat it too and say that it's preliminary and at the same time speak with such authority on your conclusions. And there is a discrepancy there that needs to be addressed. Okay, let's uh, ask this question then, Dr. Morandi. Um, we've seen the statistics, and yes, there are some differing interpretations. But one thing's for sure, um, that as Western media was heavily going, many analysts from here and abroad were saying um, the, the higher the voter turnout, the more likely Musavi will win. Uh, and then we came to election day and we saw this huge turnout and a huge victory for Ahmadinejad. Um, the question then still remains, putting all the statistics aside and the question marks and on that, where did those votes come from and why did people vote for Ahmadinejad uh, if they'd voted for Mr. Karoubi the, the two, four years earlier? or well, they hadn't voted. Why Ahmadine uh, Dr. Ahmadinejad? Well, there are really an, a lot of issues here. And as um, you know, I'd like to point out that I didn't vote for Mr. Ahmadinejad or Mr. Musevi. But the reality on the, you know, on the ground is that the turnout was much higher in all parts of the country. In some parts of Tehran, like the north of Tehran, the center of Tehran, the turnout was much higher. But the same was true in the south of Tehran. The same was true in the provinces. Mr. Ahmadinejad has traveled the country. People throughout the country have for the first time seen their president on the ground, in their town, in their village, looking to see what's going on. Can I just comment on that point, though, because this report says, well, in fact, the rural areas are only about 30% of the population, so it wouldn't make much of a difference. Now, even the provinces themselves. He's been to the each and every capital of each province at least two times, many of them three to four times. That's a huge difference. That's not, not what President Khatami or President Rafsanjani or even what Prime Minister Musavi did when he was running the government during the war. Now, whether this is a good way to manage a country or not, you know, that's another issue altogether. But he, the man is popular. Now, a, a point that I'd like to make is that, A, uh, in the 2005 elections, Mr. Ahmadinejad, in the second round, when he reached the second round with Mr. Rafsanjani, almost all the other candidates, whether reformist or conservative or principalist or whatever you'd like to call them, they either supported Mr. Hashimi Rafsanjani or they didn't support either side. But he still won the election. And that shows that most people in Iran don't vote for reformists or principalists or conservatives. They vote for the candidate. Otherwise, if the, uh, if the case was the opposite, then Mr. Rafsanjani should have won the election, not Mr. Ahmadinejad. Let's leave it on that point because we are out of time. I'd like to thank you, Dr. Mohammed Morandi, joining us uh, in the studio uh, in Tehran, professor at the University of Tehran and, and a critic as head of the current administration. Also joining us, Dr. Uh, Kava Afshajabi, who's a political analyst and author, also a former UN consultant. And I'd also like to thank Dr. Ali Ansari, uh, who, was, who was joining us uh, for the time that he was with us. Thank you. The director of the Institute of Iranian Studies and a consultant to the British government. And many thanks to all our guests. Oh, well, a heated debate there that we recorded just about an hour ago so that all our guests could be in attendance. Three differing views there, and that's what we want to bring to you this week here on Press TV, a look at all the views and all the angles. So make sure you join us at 18.30 GMT for another edition of our special coverage on post-election Iran. <laughs>